Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and today is card number two with my Gnome for Christmas card series. So this is just a close up again of the Gnome for Christmas stamp and thin cut from Close to My Heart. This is the little gnome that we are going to be using today to create card number two. I also used an older retired stamp set right here. This is called Woodland Wishes. I went ahead and used this tree and then this framelit right here I used for my sentiment. Here is a close-up of the card that we'll be creating today. Again, I am using a lot of different techniques. I'm going to be using some Distressed Oxide ink again. Then I'm going to be doing some splattering with some White Daisy ink and then also with some Shimmer Brush. So I don't know if it's catching it. You can kind of see it. The little added shimmer that's on the background of that, I did a little bit of a different technique to kind of get a falling snow effect on this card. And then on the Gnome, you can kind to see that I did add some stickles just to get some extra shine to it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the base piece started. So what I like to use are the Tim Holtz Distressed Oxide Ink pages. They're kind of thicker. I believe they're good for watercoloring as well. You can actually use any kind of paper on it. I just really like the way that the Distress Oxide inks work on that particular paper. And Close to My Heart does sell that now in the new catalog. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of do a gradient, almost like I did last time, except I am just going to use two colors this time. I will be using the Chipped Sapphire and then the Peacock Feathers. So just like the last time, gonna go ahead, get some ink on here, kind of starting off of the paper and then just working my way up. Just using the little swirling method and just kind of going from there. And I am using that piece of kind of Teflon on the back just so I don't get my desk messy because these Distress Oxide inks, although they are awesome, they can actually stain your surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a good amount of the darker color on first, and then get the peacock feathers on there. And what I like about mixing these two is you do get a nice blue in the middle where they both kind of mix together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that kind of rubbed on top, making sure I'm in camera, making sure I'm going over the line where they do actually meet and then kind of bringing that upwards as well. This one is very similar in the fact that I wanted to make sure that there were hills in the background. This one has the cute little gnome that has the light string and instead of using the glitter paper for the hill, I went ahead and used the pearl paper. And then I also used a different thin cut. So all of the thin cuts do come in these border thin cuts. So this is called the fancy border thin cuts. The last card I used this one, and then I am using this one, which is kind of a more slight hill on this card. So again, just kind of making sure I'm getting the colors on. Kind of want a little bit more of the gradation between those two colors. And it's really nice, again, if you just have the two colors, all you really have to do is put kind of the light color down first and then cover it with the dark and you almost have a third new color right there. So I think this looks good. It's got a nice little gradient from the darker to the lighter. And you can see right here in the middle, we have almost our own little purple kind of bluish color as well. Go ahead and get those off to the side. The other technique that I wanted to show you is kind of some splattering for this. So what I'm doing is actually just using the Daisy White. What I'm doing is kind of squishing it because I want to get some of the ink on the top of this pad. Then I'm just going to go ahead and spray a little bit of water. And then I'm just taking an old brush, and this is actually an old makeup brush that I just had, that I am just kind of getting this 
all saturated so I can splatter it. So I'm making sure I get it mixed up and then getting it on the paintbrush. And then I'll go ahead and just kind of tap it onto the background. So I'll pick up some more, get it tapped up, and just kind of go all throughout the background to get that really fun falling snow effect. I'll focus more of it on top because the bottom does get covered with those hills. The hills on this card are not as large or tall as the card I did the other day. So I'm not too worried about getting, or I'm gonna go down to the bottom, but I know that I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom. So there's a little bit of that. So I do want it to actually be more intense. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Get some of that ink on the top and then spray a little bit more of that water and just go ahead and pick up some more and do the same thing. And I'm not worried about this being perfect or spread out evenly. I want it to look just like a natural snowfall where the flakes just kind of go wherever they want. And then for the added touch, I also wanted to use the clear shimmer brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get that going and just get that on the background. And this is just how I typically do the splatters with the shimmer brush. I go ahead and just use the top. Squeeze out a little bit more. Get that down. And remember to stress oxide inks work with water. So this will be wet for quite some time. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of over here, take a heat tool and just kind of dry it. That way we don't have to wait as long for the assembly part. And I could have gone ahead and made one ahead of time and then just use that. But I kind of wanted to show you guys in real time if you are making a bunch of these and you don't want to wait for them to dry, just use your heat gun and it'll get it dried real quick. So that should do it. So here is that awesome background that we made. I think it's super pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all put away. Let's kind of move this off to the side because I don't need it anymore. Then we'll go ahead and get working on the surface. So I will just get you guys down a little bit. Sorry for the shaking camera. And time for the assembly part, which is probably the most fun of all of the card making. So right here, I have the two hills that I cut out of the pearl paper. Go ahead and get those glued down. The pearl paper I think is really fun to create a hill because it almost looks like, it still looks like the snow, but instead of the like fresh snow, it looks like it's snow that has kind of been there for a while. So I just think that's fun that you can get a really cute technique either using the pearl paper or the glitter paper. So the main character right here is this little guy with the light string. I did not put the stickles on yet. I'm going to do that right at the end. But I wanted to show you that I did color him with the dark red and the jade green shades. And I kept it pretty simple. I just used those two colors and did a little bit of the gray around his beard and brim. Then these three trees, which I cut out, like I said, with a retired stamp set. Those go on the background, but they are kind of angled differently. So this one will go here. This one I'm going to cut down as well. So I'm just kind of going to cut this one shorter, just right here, cutting that down. He will get kind of tucked in back there. This one as well will get tucked into the background. And then this one will go right there. And our little gnome will kind of be covering it right there. Just 
just want to make sure this one's off a little bit more. Just working on the little placement of them. Get this one straight, and I think that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use the liquid glue for these. I got those two kind of stuck in place, so I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue in the back. Not too much because I don't want it to kind of ooze out of the sides. So go ahead and just get that added while it's still kind of tucked in the back of those snowbanks. This guy right here, I'm just going to add a good amount of glue. Again, making it thin because I don't want it to kind of go everywhere. I'm going to pop up the cute little gnome just like I did last time using those little extra squares that are left over from the shaker card just get a few on here and these little squares stick really well to either glitter paper or this pearl paper which is really nice because I know not every adhesive works so nicely with either the pearl or the glitter but that works really well then on top for the sentiment so this is the sentiment Merry Christmas this actually comes in the gnome for Christmas set and this was that banner that I talked about so I cut it out in the white and the green because I kind of wanted to make it an extended banner so what I'm going to do is just actually cut this in half and then cut an angle out. This is going to get glued down. Nobody's going to see that background part anyway. I just want to do that so when I tuck it behind, there is no extra pieces hanging out. So I'm going to go ahead and use some liquid adhesive for that too. Just kind of a thin amount as well. We don't need too much for that. Go, oh, did that backwards. Go ahead and get that glued down. Get that pushed in a little bit. And I like using the liquid because, again, liquid is more movable. So on that angle, if I did it too thick, I can kind of just get it moved in. And then on this side, same thing. Get that added. This will also be raised right at the top. And this is actually covering this tree a little bit. And that's okay. I don't think it's okay if they're not completely identical. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't too big and it didn't take up or it didn't um, overlap this background because this page is the size of a regular A2 card. So this I'm also going to pop up. Again, just taking some of that 3D foam tape, just kind of adding it to the back. Getting that taken off and putting that right on the top. And it'll just kind of go right at the top. For a little bit extra, I decided to pearl, uh, take out some items from my stash. So I'm just going to take these little gems or dots and add that to the side. And then what I really think adds a lot of character to this is adding these stickles. So again, I am using the diamond stickles and I am putting them right on those lights because I wanted my lights to stay clear lights, but I thought adding a little bit of glitter would be really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those all added to every little light on here. And then I added a little bit of glitter right to the brim of his hat. You could obviously add a little more glitter throughout, but I just saw it with the background having the shimmer brush and then just this little added touch. It definitely made it what I would like to call more Christmassy just because I think all Christmas cards need glitter. The more glitter, the better. The last thing is just the assembly. Again, you could always just glue your background first and then put it on your card base. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue or tape on directly to the card base. That way, when I lift this up, I can just set it down and assemble. So we'll go ahead and get that down. And since there's no glitter in the backs of this one, like the first card I made, I can go ahead and push that down 
and that is the finished product and what i really like again about these distressed oxide inks is you can almost you can make the same background if you want to but you can just add a little bit of difference so i added the chipped sapphire to this one as well as the peacock feather and it just gives a nice darker background so this one looks more like a night scene and this one over here looks more like a day scene and I just think it's really cute especially if you are assembling a bunch of cards but you kind of want to mix them up a little bit just play with your background and it completely changes the card so here's the one that we created today and here's the one I created earlier thank you so much as always for joining me happy crafting and I will see you all next time